the Tommy and Trap Master events of the Thomas the Tank Engine, episode 18, Wonky Whistle. It was another busy day on the island of Sodom, and all the engines were working hard. The sun was shining, it was a lovely day, and partners and freight on Soda were pretty busy as usual. On another sunshine, sunny day on summer on Soda, and on Tom's this branch sign, everything was running like clockwork as normal. Today, Tom's was in a very exciting mood. He was very, very happy. Annie, clever, he said excitedly. I'm so happy today. What is it? said Annie. Like, what's going on? Tomorrow, there's gonna be a party. A party, said Clapper? What kind of party is it? Well, it's, it's a little bit different. It's gonna be a summer party. Ooh, they said. Yep, you heard me right. And this time, it's going to be a beach party. It's going to be held at Norway Beach. And there's going to be like a beach party for the children. And some of us entries are going to go there to the party. To watch the children have fun. And seeing all the children playing in the sand, making sand characters. And see them in the water. That's pretty nice, Annie. I love the beach, and I love seeing Chuck when being by there. I do too, girls. I'm pretty excited for the beach party tomorrow. Thomas continued on his way to his branch line, thinking about the beach party. Then, a little bit later, something unexpected happened. When Tony was popping under the bridge, some boys were playing rocks. They're throwing it at the tracks. And then all of a sudden, as one of the rocks fell off of the bridge, it fell down and fell on top of this whistle, causing it to separate a little bit. Then when Thomas got out of the bridge tunnel, he decided to blow his whistle. I'm very excited, he said. But when he blew his whistle, it didn't sound like normal. What? said Thomas. What just happened to my whistle? Annie and Clubber were puzzled. Thomas, uh, what happened to your pee pee whistle? Your whistle sound like wonky. No, said Thomas. That, that cannot be. I... I don't know what happened, but we need to, to, to we need to drop out these passengers first to find out what happened. Thomas continued on his way to his to the to the station. When Thomas arrived at Elspeth Station, as he tooted his wonky whistle, the passengers didn't bother any club and they cut the ears of the noise. Even Toby and Henrietta didn't like the noise, too. Blast my bell, said Toby. Thomas, what happened to your whistle? I I don't even know. I mean, for a minute, it sounds like a peep beep. Then out of nowhere, it sounds like all wonky. <sighs> my goodness, said Henrietta. I don't know what really happened. Just then, Annie remembers something. I I know I know what happened. What? asked Thomas. Well, earlier when you're popping under the bridge, some boys were playing rocks over the bridge. And I think one of your whistles no, one of the rocks, it fell down and it fell on your whistle, causing it to get out of place. Made that cause it to sound a bit wonky. <gasps> Sinners and Nassau, said Thomas. You may be right about this. We must get, we, I must go to the steamworks to get it repaired. But, but Thomas, well, what about your passengers and any club? Um, you still need to do your passengers for the afternoon, right? 
Maybe later, said Thomas. Right now, my words are that important. Maybe someone else can do it for me. Well, see you, Toby. And Thomas left with Annie Clapper and his so-called wonky whistle that he felt very embarrassed. After Thomas arrived at Napa Station to drop off Annie and Clapper to head to go to the Steamworks, as he blew his wonky whistle, this caused some of the engine to go chaotic. The engines were surprised. Thomas, said Percy surprisingly, what, what happened to your whistle? It sounds awful and it's so wonky. Well, Percy, said Thomas, some boys earlier were messing around a box and one of the rocks hit my whistle, causing it to go crooked and causing my whistle to be very wonky. I'm, I'm so embarrassed. In fact, none of my partners or Toby or even Henny yet like the noise. It's like that wonky whistle of mine is so wonky. But this causes Henry and Diesel to laugh. <laughs> said Henry. Look at Thomas with his wonky whistle. Maybe you're gonna force him mid to death at the party tomorrow, said Henry. And besides, this reminds me what happened to Gordon with his wonky whistle a long time ago, and it was so hilarious. And Gordon was very embarrassed of him. And besides, what happened to Thomas Peep Peep? It's like not guns and Henley. How he's gonna get it back? And plus, that's not how a wonky whistle sounds like. A whistle sounds like this. And a horn, said Diesel. A horn sound perfectly sounds like this. Henry and Diesel laugh and laugh because Thomas Wonky Whistle sound to them was pretty funny. But Thomas was very embarrassed. He didn't want anyone else to hear his wonky whistle. So he rushed out of Napa Station without any club bell. Percy was shocked. Thomas, where are you going? Come back. But Thomas was already gone out in the distance. Henry and Diesel couldn't stop laughing. Oh, come on, you two. Look what you did now. You made Thomas feel like bad about himself. And now he kind of run away. Henry and Diesel sort of fade down to laughing. I'm sorry, said Henry, but that wonky whistle was hilarious. Expect the Gordon way back then. Yeah, said Diesel. That wonky whistle sounds funny. Well, to me, said Percy, it's not that funny. Now we better report to the top and hand about this. Meanwhile, with Thomas, he traveled a long distance far away from Timmy's shed. By then, he was tired. I need somewhere to sleep. And plus, and plus, it's a one way back to Timmy's shed. Not tired of her back there. So, so he decided he saw a sighting. Thomas went into a siding, where it was not that far off the main line. I just sit here, said Thomas. That way, no one would ever notice my wonky whistle again. Thomas felt very bad about himself and his wonky whistles that Diesel and Henry did kind of make fun of him with his whistle. And Thomas did kind of admit to his shit. It was a pretty, it was a pretty kind of not so cool night, but Thomas wished he could be out his warm Tidmouth shed. The next day, all the engines were about to wake up begin the daily work. That was a pretty good sleep, said James. Yeah, said Percy, but where's Thomas? I don't know, said Henry. I noticed that too, like everyone else. Like, he, we thought that Thomas was like on a night ship or something, like pulling a mail train, but he's basically just disappeared. 
don't tell me something that bad happened to him, said Gordon. This reminded what also happened back when we were building, I mean, we discovered in Great Water Town. Yeah, don't tell me something bad happened to him again. Just then, Sir Topman had a live on Winston. Good morning, and this is the top and half. Now, as you all know, later today, we're gonna have the beach party at Norby Beach. Um, sir, said Percy, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but we got an emergency. You see, Tommy is not here. Like, we thought that Tommy is on a nice ship or something, but all the time he's not here. Like, where is he, said James. Hmm, said the top and half. This could be a mystery. We must find Tommy as quickly as possible. And by the way, you will continue to do your jobs as normal. But if you let but if you see Thomas, let me know. And with that, the top and hat left with Winston. I hope nothing bad happened to him, they all wondered. Back with Thomas, he was still sitting all alone. Since it was now the early days of the morning. It's now the early hours of the morning. Well, at least I slept okay, he said to himself. But I'm so worried that I'll be in trouble. Just then, Thomas heard a familiar whistle that he know of. It was his friend, Luna, who came to find him. Hey, dude, Thomas, what are you doing out here out, like, in the middle of, like, nowhere almost? Well, said Thomas, I can't explain. He explained Luna everything of what happened. Huh, it's okay, dude, she said. We all been through like that. We start having embarrassing moments, but sometimes they can be pretty funny ones. So just ignore it, okay? That made Thomas feel a, it felt a lot better now. Thank you, said Thomas. I'm pretty happy to have a friend like you. Now we better get back going, or we'll still be wondering where I am. Okay, dude, great idea. After Thomas got Annie and Clubbo again, he managed to pick up the check, went to the beach, and they arrived at the Norby beach just in time. There were some engines gathered at the beach. Thomas, said Percy, you are right. Yeah, said Thomas, sorry I ran away like that. It because I was kind of embarrassed on my wonky whistle, but guess what? It's now fixed now. It's now fixed now. Listen to this. Okay, said everyone. That sounds a lot better. That sounds like you, said Toby. The real you. Thomas, said Henry. I kind of want to apologize for my absence from yesterday to make you run away like that. I'm pretty sorry. I didn't mean to. I thought that the wonky wizard thing was kind of a little bit funny. It's okay, Henry, said Thomas. I accept your apology. I know you didn't mean to, but sometimes these things can go a little bit too far. What are we waiting for? Sit down. Let's enjoy, sit back and let's enjoy the party. So all of the engines sit down and watch the children as they play in the beach. They made sand castles, they played volleyball, and some of them went into the normal beach water, even wanted to wet themselves. And everything was forgiven of Thomas, uh, from Thomas and what he done with his accent. Same thing, it's okay to feel embarrassed of yourself, but sometimes it can be pretty funny.